guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys today we are going to be taking on phantom shogun which i have to say is one of the worst dungeons in ray Chair legends it's between phantom shogun and sand devil i just think they have such potential to be awesome dungeons but they just throw in too many mechanics they make it so complicated and it's either you need to have crazy god tier um champions or you just have to cheese it like two man it or or whatever and it just it sucks it sucks it's just not how the game should be i kind of miss like classic raid like if you played dragon 20 there was probably like a hundred different teams that players could build where in new content now it's very restrictive so the team that we're going to be using today is just for stage 20 down to stage 24 and this is what we're rolling with so we've got narhal two cold hearts uh, mithrala and emic so this team works from 20 to 24 you can rebuild it for stage 25 for an auto team and um, the only thing with that though is you know i will sort of want to do the 20 to 24 today and then later down the line i'll make a video on the 25 because you need to have different speeds for that um yeah so this is a manual run um can't fall over this afraid but it's okay, you only have to do it once and we can work our way up. So we're gonna open up with Hex, with Mifrala. I think we'll do, just do the A1 and Emic for now. Cold Heart, always prioritize that Heart Seeker. That's where all your big damage is gonna come from. Null Horn, we're gonna use the unkillable buff straight off the bat. And then we're gonna cleanse with Mifrala. And then we will use the AT on Emic. That's going to reduce our cooldowns just so we can sort of cycle through quicker. Just keep getting those um, heart seekers to start popping. And again, we'll just use Hex. The great thing about Hex is it's going to increase our damage with the attack, but also give us that all important um, uh, increased defense as well. Because that every every little bit of helps. Every bit helps. Okay, and we're just going to keep cycling through. And we're just holding on at the moment for our unkillable buff. And actually, we can just go again. So I'm just going to hold on to it. If Null Horn's got it, it's all good, baby. And again, another Heart Seeker. I mean, it's so funny to think how amazing, um, <laughs> how amazing Cold Heart is that, you know, where a lot of champions over the years have lost their value. She has to be the greatest rare of all time. Like, I can't think of anyone that has really stood the test of time like she has. And she just, you know, she can literally be used almost everywhere. There's so much content she can use considering she's a rare. I mean, rares get no love these days. Even epics, even epics are falling off nowadays. Um, and she can still be usable. All right, and that looks like that's going to be a really clean run. Oh, I did mess up there. I should have um, gone for the unkillable. Luckily, we're tanky enough to survive. So that was um, stage 20. I just want to have a quick look. So 21 is probably the only one we might have a problem with just because of the affinity matchup. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try stage 24. I'm hoping we don't get a failed run um you know i've not done this for a long time now like i said you do it once and then you just leave it and never touch it again so same again we're going to open up with the hex that increase attack that increase defense uh, a1 from uh emic and then the heart seekers popping off again and then we're gonna put that unkillable buff on nullhorn yeah and he's just gonna tank that all up then we're going to cleanse, going to make sure that we've got the, you know, the strength and the shield, because it does help it all. We need every little bit to beat this guy. And yes, yeah, so they did nerf Phantom Shogun, and it's definitely a lot easier. They reduce stats. You don't need as much accuracy and stuff. But I still feel the mechanic, it, it's better than what it was. But it just comes down to that they make it so hard to awaken your champions. Um, 
And that's that's where the real issue is. But yeah, I mean, he's a really cool looking boss. I love like the background, the details and himself, like just how he looks as well, like riding his horse and stuff. I don't, there's no, as far as, I can't think of any champions that we can play with yet that um, ride horses, but that'd be pretty cool. That is something I'm looking forward to. We do have that sausage frog though. I can't remember his name. Um, yeah, so we've got the um, A2 on Emic there. Uh, he was the mount. He's a fusion. Oh, he was terrible though. Virgum Khan or something. Virgum Scan. Literally unusable. Yeah, so just have to be careful there. I think that's the only part that if you mess that up, then you get a failed run. So actually, I am going to use Emic now, use his unkillable, just to make sure that we do survive. Throwing out the hex again. It's always nice when that smite lands and it's protected. Um, Mithrala, obviously, she doesn't need to be three three and above is fine with her. But it's just because I use her in Hydra. That's why I pushed up to five star. And then, yep, hold hold on to your unkillable. And then another heart seeker. And that's it. We should be pretty good now. A2. Set those cooldowns, cleanse, slap the boss a little bit, and we're still tanking it. Okay, unkillable uh, buff on Nahorn, A1 off Emic, and then the A2 off Mifrala, and he's gone! He's down! So, yeah, I mean, they were pretty clean runs and pretty easy to do. So two minutes and nine seconds, two minutes and 37 seconds. So it's not a huge amount of time. And then once you can get to stage 25, you can, you know, just easily make a full auto team now and just comfortably sit with it. I mean, it's a pretty, I'd say it's kind of a joke now because we found in Shogun, like I said, they've made the mechanics so complicated that either, um, you know, either it's you've got crazy crazy legendaries and mythicals or you've got people using like full rare teams it, it just it just doesn't add up so we we'll have a look at the teams of the week i mean that is disgusting literally i've just gone <laughs> we've got four um four nukas and then lady makaki and look that is really like common team comp i want to see if i can build something like that because that'd be pretty sweet I reckon it's really, really fast to clear. Someone's gone with a double nuke team comp. That's interesting. I want to try. I want to try that out. Um, God, God knows what the stats are like and stuff. But yeah, it is hard. Like I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe, maybe no, no. I was gonna say maybe they're in stone skin, but actually, you can see they've got savage on. So yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, definitely want to try that out. So. Um, yeah, there's no preset here because obviously we are manual in it. So let's check out the team comp. And first we'll start off with Mithrala. So this Mithrala build as well works in Doom Tower. I still use her for Doom Tower. I like her in Triple Perception. It also means you can still use her in Arena as well. Um, for me, my favorite builds are ones where I can use a champion in loads of places. I don't want to limit my champions to one place. The more boxes they can tick, the better they are. So let's just have a look at the total stats. So 53k HP, um, 4.1k defense. So if you wanted to like maybe use her a bit more in arena, you could take that out and bump it up even more because it's so hard to, you know, uh, to land debuffs on her that she is just so tanky. 288 speed. So the speeds are essential here. Actually, let me just show you all the speeds quickly. Little hack that we will do. So if we come back to Phantom Shogun, look at the team set up, scroll down. So yeah, I should probably start with this, bro. I should have started with this. So speed 288 on Mithrala, Emic at 271, Cold Heart 249, Second Cold Heart 251, and then Null Horn, really, really slow at 184. So yeah, we'll just come back out and start and start again, boys. We'll start again. So yeah, triple perception though is great because of her passive. It means that we're getting extra resistance. So 
people were not going to be able to lock you out. Um, and yeah, I guess technically because I'm using her for Hydra, I should probably up her crit rate. Um, but yeah, got 373 resistance, 671 accuracy. Insane. So I'll just go for all the gear. Um, gloves, we've got defense, we've got accuracy on the chest piece and speed on the boots. Uh, not the best ring. Um, I probably could swap this out, to be honest now. I guess the only reason I took it at the time is because it was reaction um, and it was useful in arena, but actually that's no good anymore. It needs to go. And a very nice uh, accuracy banner on it as well. Masteries, just like a very standard PvE build support tree making sure we pick up Master Hexer because she throws out a lot of debuffs. Um, and then we've got Deadly Precision for that extra crit rate, Keen Strike for crit damage, and then sort of just hugging the left-hand side all the way down to War Master. I didn't take Singled Out, which is kind of weird. Normally I do. Um, that is a must For this, I would not take Rapid Response. I think I just took that for PvE and Doom Tower, but actually for this boss, that can cause problems because it can make you go out of sync. So it would be better to take singled out, but you know, it still works. So it's all good, baby. And then Emic. So, oh, he's got no ring. He's been robbed. I, I must have I must have been doing some rebuilding. Didn't even realize, but um, I'll probably just go for a HP ring on him. So we've got regen set and immortal. And yeah, lots of speed on him. Uh, we've got defense on the gloves with a nice triple roll. A triple roll on the chest piece with also defense. Uh, not even fully rolled up. I don't know why that is. The real deal is very unprepared today. Very unprepared. Uh, and then speed on the boots. Does need a defense ring. Uh, defense on the amulet. And then, sorry, HP on the ring. HP on the ring. HP on the amulet. And then a defense banner. Jesus Christ, just not with it today, guys. Just not with it. Uh, 662k um, HP, 4.5k defense, 271 speed. Um, and then, yeah, the rest doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, fully booked apart from his A1. Don't need it. To be fair, you just want books in the A2 and A3. So masteries, that's interesting. I've not, I sort of left it. Um, let's do it now. Life Drinker, I am not a fan of Wrath of the Slain. Um, it's just one of those ones, it makes no sense to me. Why would I want, I don't want my teammates to die. That, uh, yeah, I've never, never really done that. Leech is no good for us. I guess Solidarity is the only real option here. Um, and cycle violence will be good, but obviously he doesn't hit hard enough for that to work. Um, but yeah, so he's got a bit of an unusual build. I think it's mainly because I was using him in arena. Could switch it up and take War Master to just some more damage, help speed up the run. Um, but yeah, so we've gone for Unshakable. Um, just, you know, extra resistance. I was using him for arena at one point. But um, to be honest, his, his masteries don't really matter too much for this. But um, yeah, if I was going to start using him in Hydra, definitely should uh, mix it up a little bit. So now I've got to scroll all the way down to our, our rares. We rarely get to do this. Um, so scrolling, scrolling down. So Nullhorn. So I did try something out of Nullhorn. I wanted to, I did like get him a 100% crit rate and he doesn't hit that hard. Even even with like this crazy amount of uh, crit damage on him. And that's really important as well. I forgot to mention he has to have the most amount of crit damage. So he's the tank in the fight. Um, but he also he has to be very slow as well. So this is an insane piece. I kind of want to take it off him. Look at that. Triple crit damage, uh, attack percentage, crit rate and speed. I mean, that is a god tier piece of um, crit, uh, crit damage gear. I need to take that off him. Uh, yeah. Again, quite a nice piece with a triple roll. Um, then just like a very average uh, shield. Crit, crit damage on the gloves. HP percentage on the chest. Speed on the boots. Defense on the ring. Crit damage on the amulet. 
And again, not fully rolled up. I guess I had no gold at the time or something. Don't know what I was doing then. And then um, accuracy on the banner. Ah, the banner doesn't really matter. It was literally, it was the only banner where I had such low speed on it. That's why we're using it because it's all about the speed tune. So 50k HP, he does need a decent amount of HP to be tanky. Uh, 2.3k defense, quite low. Uh, 184 speed, um, 315 crit damage. Um, and that's all that matters. So then we've got Cold Heart number one, who is attack. And I'm trying to remember what speed is she? Okay, so it's not this one. The other one I actually use for uh, Spider Hard, but this one, you know, just usable everywhere. So she's in three pieces of speed because she does, uh, sorry, two pieces of speed and perception because she needs to be fast. Um, but again, very, very, so got some really good gear on her actually. That is a very nice piece. Uh, crit damage on the gloves, HP on the chest because she does enemy max HP damage, speed on the boots. <laughs> is that a five star ring? Wow. Okay. You can see like, like this is what I was talking about as well. Like where Cold Heart has really stood the test of time. I probably built this ring and this banner is probably like five years, no, probably like four years old. Um, but yeah, definitely could uh, rechange that out. But yeah, HP on the ring, crit damage on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. And then, ah, uh, she is probably in the vault. Yeah. I don't know if you about you guys, but I am definitely um, starting to get a few issues now with space. Space is becoming an issue. Oh, and it's not even changed it. Come on. Oh. Okay, so they're actually both in speed and uh, perception. Interesting. So this is the faster one that I use for Spider Hard 10. Um, so again, just the same sort of thing, looking for speed, looking for crit rate. So yeah, HP on the ring, crit damage on the amulet, and a very, very low crit damage amulet. I definitely should swap that out. I don't know why I've done this. Um... And like she's use I use her all the time. So yeah, should definitely swap that out. I don't want to use that. I'll, I'll pay it. Oh, okay. I wanted to pay the tax. I was okay with it. All right, it is what it is. Yeah, might as well get that extra bit of crit damage though. Triple speed on the banner. Um, an attack. Very very nice. Um. And Masteries, they both got exactly the same. So Flawless Executioner is like a must with Cold Heart because of that enemy max HP damage. Um, basic Support Tree, going into Master Hexa. Um, she does actually have quite a unique build where you sort of split. Um, Whirlwind of Death as well. Ooh. So um, if I was to redo this, I would take off Whirlwind of Death and take shield breaker split it into ruthless ambush the reason i'm not a big fan of whirlwind of death is that if you kill people it can mess up speed tunes um which is not good so not a fan not a fan of it um yeah whirlwind of death not a fan um but otherwise it's all good and yeah just taking fullest execution uh stoked to fury is pretty good on her because if people do put debuffs on you in pve she will just slap but anyway guys that is pretty much the end of the video i hope this helps you out there beat this really pain in the ass content uh please leave me a cheeky thumbs up make sure you smash 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 that subscribe and i'll see you all in the video soon peace